way of glory. Listen to me, church. God loves you. Maybe I need to tell you again. Amen. You know, I, I think sometimes we just don't say some of the plain old obvious things we need to know. Just walk up to somebody tonight. Feel free during the message. If you need to move around and say something to someone, you're not going to bother me. If you need to walk up to them and say, hey, let's, uh, let's go to the altar while it's preaching. I just wanted you to know God loves you. Amen. And God loves you. Right where you're at. Right where you feel like you can't get out of. Uh, he meets you right there and takes care of you. He loves you. When you got saved, God, God did not uh, turn from being a you know, mean old God against sinners to a mean old God to a saint. That's not, that's not what his intention was. God's never been a mean God. That's right. He's a just God, a fair God. Equity is in him, right? Uh, and he's equal to all. That's why the ground is level at Calvary. Amen? Because anybody, the whosoever will of society, can come and be saved. God's a just God. A fair God. He'll meet you. Matter of fact, the Bible said that I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. Amen. Speaking of the Moses with the serpent in the wilderness, the same thing that's on the garment of every doctor who turns to someone and says, hey, I won't, I won't serve you or help you because you didn't do this or that. Can I tell you God's not that way? Though they carry a sign that they have no idea what it means mm -hmm. on their no. garment, I'm telling you God is a just God. Amen. A loving God. Amen. And God says, whosoever will let him come. I don't care the death row inmate, the one that you can't seem to forgive because of what he done. Come he on. understands your position, but he understands that man's position too. Amen. And he'll say, God, I'm sorry. And that old boy can go to heaven. Right. Amen? Just like you can. From the worst to the best. And I'm glad because the older I get, the worse I know I was. Amen? Amen? Paul said, among whom I am chief in the sinner's department. God's a just God. I, I, I don't know where we're going to go. I wrote some things down. To, I've been bouncing back and forth. I'm so dead gum wound up. I can't stand it. But can I, I tell you concerning that, that, that song, I, I, it's been in my heart since they sang it at, uh, at the tent revival, and it's been on my mind, and, and I preached a sermon a long time ago, I took a big old ball of yarn, and I started right there, and I ran it to every person in the congregation. It was blood red. I ran it all the way around, and I did it for a reason. Friend, you need to understand something tonight. <clears throat> You're connected if you know Jesus. Amen. And, and you got a connection. You know, you know, the great thing about that is sometimes I feel like I've had the worst week and I can't focus. I can't get some things right. I don't know what's going on. And I'll get up and I'll preach a sermon. I'm not happy with it. Somebody says, it's a great sermon you ever preached. I'm the boss here. Thank you. And I'm thinking, <laughs> you can't thank me. I'm the moron thought it was terrible all week. Amen. Uh, and God just does something with it. Or you, you preach the best one you ever thought you'd ever preach and you think it's good, but it, it didn't hit nowhere. But some old person somewhere calls you a while, a while later and says, Boy, I tell you, uh, I appreciate what you said. Maybe you have that during your week. You know what I believe that is? I believe that is a covering of the saints that have been praying for you and God's helping you out in spite of yourself. Amen. Amen. Boy, I tell you, you better thank God for a church family tonight. You better thank God for a church family. One that will turn and, and intercede for you and pray for you and talk to the Lord for you because you're connected by bloodline. I'll give you just a few verses before I actually preach a message. Genesis 3.21, the Bible says that you don't have to turn. I'm just going to give you some stuff. Write them down and look at it later. Genesis 3.21 says, you know, they had sinned in the garden. They messed everything up. He kicked them out and it says, but God made Coats of skin to cover them. It's a picture of the first time that we ever see the blood, shedding of blood to cover sin because they were naked and knew it. 
And so he covers them in skin. There's only one way to get skin off an animal, folks. The shedding of blood. And you walk through Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy and you see the sacrificial system set up where you had to go year after year, sometimes week after week on certain things, day after day when you sin, and you had to give a sacrificial, a shedding of blood offering for the remission of sin. Amen? Amen. You get to Joshua. And you see it brought to us another way. See, Rahab hides the slaves. Or hides the two Hebrew children. The, the group of Hebrews that were spying. That's more two. But anyway, the group of Hebrews that were spying. She hides them. And then they... And she tells the, the group that was looking for them, hey, they went out the gate, I guess. You might want to follow them now. And she turns to them and says, now listen, I did something for you. I know your God's a great God. I know He's the only God. Matter of fact, everybody here trembles. Everybody's heart's faint within them. There's no strength left in them. You're going to walk all over this city. Have mercy and do something for me. Have mercy on my family. They said, we'll do it if you keep the secret and you do what you're supposed to. By the way, here's what he said. The Bible says, they said, hang this scarlet line. Hang this scarlet thread in your window or in your house and we'll know it's you. If you come out or whoever comes out, their blood will be on their hands. But whoever stays in, if somebody hurts you, their blood will be on our hands. But you'll be safe in that house with that blood on there. Well, it went back to Exodus when they said, hey man, put that blood line <laughs> on the doorpost oh, yeah. and on the man. Put it on there so that when the Holy Ghost passes by, it says, that one's with me, that one's with me, that one's with me. I tell you tonight, you better thank God that across the front of the church, if it was planted right, and I assume it was, amen, because we know the old boy that's preaching in it. Hey, uh, tonight, they planted this church, and they said, Jesus, you're welcome here. And the Bible said that there was some bloodshed on the doorpost, and as people got saved, there's some bloodshed on your doorpost tonight. Don't you thank God that there's some folks inside a house somewhere, a house of God, maybe their own house, saying, hey, we want to pray for that old boy with cancer tonight. We want to pray for that young lady with a problem. We want to pray for that couple going through divorce. We want to pray for them because, Lord, you shed your blood for us, and we thank you for that, and we're claiming that blood. Hey, you can't touch the bloodline, Lord. Can we get behind the blood tonight? Can we get behind the blood tonight? I tell you, if you can get behind the bloodline, woo, you're going to be all right. I've seen many a, many a couple jump out into the world like Elimelech and Naomi. I gave you those names this morning. Elimelech, his name means my God is king. Naomi's name means pleasantness. Her life was anything but pleasant after they left Bethlehem, Judah, the house of bread, house of praise. Why would you leave the house of bread, house of praise in a family? That's about a dumb move, ain't it? You know why? Because we think we know more. We think we know more. And they come rolling back in there wanting some food. And they ask for forgiveness. And you know what? I imagine there have been some family members praying for them back home. I imagine they were down on their knees saying, oh God, you know, Naomi and them had two sons and they were ill and sickly. That was the names that, that were given them. The names back in the old days meant something. They kind of were a depiction sometimes of what they were. Such as uh, Sarah and, and Jacob and all those things. We see what their names mean something. It said they're sickly and they died. And I hear she's coming back home with Ruth. Lord, you bless them. Will you take care of them? Will you get them back here? Just get them back. You ever prayed that prayer for somebody? Lord God, would you get them back here? Amen. Just get them back. If, they, if they'll cross, cross through the bloodline, mm, God, he'll take care of them. We see Hebrews 9.22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Blood had to be shed. I thank God for the four Gospels that give us the picture of Jesus Christ shedding his blood. They said that the beating was so bad you could probably see his ribs. That 
cat of nine, 39, save one. That cat of nine tells to whip in there and, and pull that flesh out on a meat hook type deal. Uh, then all of a sudden they would nail his hands and his feet, shedding the blood. Then at the end, because scripture said you won't break a bone in his body. By the way, we could preach on that for a while. Uh, don't you know that uh, sin can push you and Satan can push on you and the world can push on you and they can, you can feel like you're going to crush. But I'm telling you, when you got Jesus, no bones will be broken. Yeah. No bones will be broken. That's the picture there. But he will shed his blood. And so they got to him and they said he's dead already. And, and to make sure, they just took it, stuck a spear in his side and it said, out came water and blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin tonight. But boy, you can thank God that Revelation 13 9 says that he shed his blood, amen, as a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Amen. 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 He shed his blood for you. Church, if I can help you in any way tonight to say this, suffering doesn't come for no reason. And the Christians, Acts 11, 26, and the Christians, or they were first called Christians in Antioch. Do you think they were called Christians because they opened the door for people and were nice and all that? Uh, they were called Christians because no matter what you did to them, they were just hurting, beating, persecuting, all, no matter what they did to them, they rode back and said, praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. They just kept on following. And then we'll Boy said, them sufferers, they're followers of Christ. You know, I think the problem sometimes, we don't suffer enough to know how to love it. Amen. Amen. That woman and I have been married for 32 years. And I know on her part it was just joyful and easy. <laughs> enough said. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. That was some getting used to with me. Lord, have mercy. Amen? But boy, I tell you, I couldn't love her any more than I do today. There's no way I loved her that much then. And I loved her. But I'm telling you, God's grown on me a little bit. And I love her. And she know, I say this all the time. I, I know men are going, good night. He just says it. You're right, I do. Amen. I just say it. I send her stuff better than I used to. I love them better than I used to. Man, I love them. Amen? And I'm telling you, it's a picture. Because when I get to thinking about it, it's a picture of what Jesus has done for me, the bride. Amen. The bride. Amen? I sure hope. I sure hope you look toward Jesus to get some loving. And let Him love on you and hug on you. Boy, you ever feel a member just hug on you a little bit and you think, boy, they gave me a little bit of Jesus, man. Thank you for that. Amen? What a blessing. What a blessing, church. Take advantage of your church family. Amen. Amen? Take advantage of them. Matter of fact, be a part of that. Uh, Brother Lenny, you said it right in prayer a while ago. Take some time to be a blessing to someone this week. Well, I won't keep you more than an hour. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Genesis, Genesis chapter 11. This has been on my heart. I have a series of messages that God is developing, de developing in me. And uh, from time to time, now you heard a little bit of one at the uh, tent revival. Uh, I believe it all started with that one. It's how to have a Philadelphia church in the Laodicean church age. And so we want to be like the Philadelphia church who was... The church that was the soul winners of any church that we've ever known. But the Laodicean church, which is our church age, is the worst church that we've ever known. Now the good news is we don't have to be a Laodicean church. Right? We, we can be something else. And, and, and this is just another one of those sermons in that series. And I really just got to get it out. I've kind of talk, talked about it Thursday night in a Bible study, but I really just kind of want to uh, preach, teach, if you will. I don't know if I really know what the word teach means, but I try before I get really wound up. Amen? So I want you to look, I want you to remain sitting tonight, if you don't mind, because I want to run through some passages. I don't want to be disrespectful to the Word of God at all, but I do want to go through some stuff. 
At, uh, uh, Genesis chapter 11, I want to start right here. It's the Tower of Babel, or uh, the subtitle would be, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. This is what the Bible says. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. By the way, that will be the city of Babel later on. And it, see, uh, and they said one to another, Go to and let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. By the way, that place is known for its mortar today. It comes straight up out of the ground. That pitch comes straight up out of the ground. It's some of the best in the world, they say. And they, uh, and they said, Go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to, to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound their language of all the earth, uh, confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all of the earth. Lord God, we love you. We ask you now to help us understand the text. And help us apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, an interesting passage right in the middle of Genesis. Now, uh, and, and as we go through Genesis 11, uh, you just get genealogy after genealogy. Uh, but right here, before we get into that, we, we've seen... Uh, some of the descendants, we've seen the flood take place. They've landed. They've, he's told them some things. And, and now it is basically a hundred years. It's, that's all it is. It's a hundred years from the time that Noah stepped off the ark to around this time. Most scholars believe it's only about a hundred years. Amen? It's incredible what takes place. Now, when we first look at this, uh, when you look at this passage, you wonder... What, what is the big deal? Why did God do that? What, what's going on in the text? I mean, maybe there's a little bit of awkwardness, but you're going to see uh, what really is taking place. The hardest thing in the world to do, or I should say the hardest thing concerning salvation, to me, is letting go. The hardest thing in the world when you're getting saved the hardest thing in the world is letting go. You see, what you have to let go of is just, you know, everything. Amen? Amen? Because up until that point, you were, you were either, you were counting on your accountant or your, uh, your uh, wealth or maybe your work or, or your self-will or your power or this or that. You were counting on everything. Your family, your this, all those things. Even, even the church. Amen? But, but you, when you get saved, you can't say in the name of the church. We have denominations that do that. That's apostasy. Amen? So, so the hardest thing, to, when you're getting saved, the hardest thing in the world to do is let go. I mean, you just got to say, Lord, I am a sinner. I'm lost, I'm undone, I'm no good. You know, I'll go to some churches and I'll start to preach this, how sorry we are. And I mean, you can see some people get uncomfortable and go, oh, damn, I ain't that sorry. I thought, wait, you ain't that safe. <laughs> you ain't bothering me none. I know how sorry I am. Yeah, you are. That's right. Keep saying it, girl, I'm good. Because I know how far I got saved from. Kenya sings a song It says, Thank you don't know the cost of the oil yep. in my alabaster box. Amen. Hey, hey, listen, we can all sing that song. Once you get saved and you start growing, you start understanding how lost you were. Yep. 
A man cannot get saved who knows where he's going. I know, Lord. I know. I know. I know. How many of you men were like that before you got saved? Tell the truth. Yeah, I know. I know. I know, woman. I know, man. I know. I know. You get over there in the corner and go, I don't know. I do not know. And the Lord's saying, I know. I don't want to turn to you yet, Lord. I don't want to turn to you yet. And boy, you're steady going down, down, down. I remember when I got saved. But I'll tell you, there's another thing, too. I remember, I remember when I really surrendered my life. You see, I, I got saved but, uh, 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 as a young man, a, a little 12-year-old boy, but uh, I, I grew up singing in bars with my dad. And grew up doing this. My dad got gloriously saved. I got saved close to the same time, a little before him. And uh, her dad led my dad to the Lord. My wife's dad led my, my dad to the Lord and sang the gospel quartet for years. And, and so, but it was only... You know, that was a process. By that time, I was already grown, I mean, 12, you know, and there was no laying down the Bible, so to speak. My mom's the one that made all that happen, by the way. And the Lord, right, she's the one that said, I'm tired of this, we're going to church. And so, when you, when you, you've got to let go of some things. And to let go of that, that power, authority, I'm convinced that as I, I go to different churches and as I've served some 20 years uh, close to it uh, as a pastor, not only music and youth, all that kind of stuff, but I, there's something that we've got to watch out for in the church, and that's people uh, individually wanting power and control. But not only that, we see it in a different way, and that's the few things I want to talk to you about. I want to show you something that's happening in our lives right now, and that could happen in the church if you don't watch it. Because listen, I don't care what denomination that, that we belong to, amen, or don't belong to. I know this. I know how I believe. I already Baptist because I figured out I think they're right. Now, am I probably wrong about a few things? Maybe. And he'll have to deal with me or Scripture will deal with me and I'll get those right or left. Amen. But concerning my salvation, you can't repent to a church. You can't lose it. Come on. Because you can't lose that which you didn't have to get. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, uh, understanding a few of those things, I want to say that denominationalism, now, now, listen to me close. Denominationalism will not start a revival. And it will not help a, a, a person in a local assembly. A local, called out, autonomous church. Let me say that again. In the sense that, hey man, they can't put enough boots on the ground. The local church has got to do its job. And quit worrying about the salvation of the church coming from the outside. Hey man, it comes from the inside. From the bloodline. Maybe yeah, you didn't hear me. Let me make sure I'm making myself clear. Too many times, look. In society right now, we have a problem of going, well, let the higher-ups handle it. Brother, let me tell you I am. You know why? Because I found out as an individual when I got saved that I had a direct line. And I could say, Lord Jesus, I don't know about everyone else, but I need to know what you're saying. I've got the Word of God. I've got prayer. I've got saints with me. I've got saints of old I can look into and, and, uh, as authority. and I can. But you tell me what you want me to hear. I'm convinced that part of the problem in society is we're looking towards society or uh, denominationalism or, or government to help us when the dollar bill says it best. We just don't do it. In God, we trust. Amen? Not denominationalism. That's right. You can't be in your own mind. I'm good. He'll, he'll send me somewhere to preach. I'll find the corner. <laughs> this is what I'm telling you. Number one, if you're taking notes, I want you to understand what it looks like in society. Concerning this tower that they're building, look at what it says. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Boy, isn't that great? Everybody could talk to everybody. The only problem is, it says, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, that means they were leaving somewhere, headed somewhere, uh, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Here we go, stopping again. Same thing, Ray, uh, 
uh, uh, that Elimelech and Naomi did. Oh, let us go check something out. Let us, let us stop where we're not supposed to stop. Amen? Amen? Now, you could break that down individually, couldn't you? How many of you grown until you don't want to grow? Just wow. think about it. You ain't got to amen. <laughs> and they said one to another, verse 3, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And, and, and do all this. It says, and they said, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. What for? And let us make us a name. Let us make us a name. I'm a patriot, Brother Coy. I'm a patriot. I love America. Do you love it more than Jesus? Because you're wrong if you do. Amen. 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 I served in the military too. My dad served in the military. My brother served in the military. But I don't love the country more than I love Jesus. Amen. Matter of fact, the only thing that will hold the country together is Jesus. Amen. Right. Amen. That's the problem we're having. And so, the first thing I want you to see as we look at the scope of, of this, this passage and the scope of what's happening today, right now, is society. It literally took 100 years from this saying. Flip back to chapter 9 for me. The flood's over. He tells them in verse, chapter 8 and verse 22, the last one, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. There you go. If you want a verse for global warming, you're okay now. You ain't got to be scared. I guarantee you that if the sun goes down, it's coming up. I guarantee if it goes up, it's coming down. Matter of fact, it really don't do that. We just say it because it's doing this. <laughs> not it, the earth. Amen. I'm not that slow. <laughs> right? Seed time and harvest. Oh, you mean we're going to plant something that's going to grow and we're going to be able to harvest? Yeah. Cold and heat. Oh, wait a minute. I thought global warming was supposed to take effect. Twelve years, we all going to die and have to be driving mopeds. Amen? <laughs> going to have to take four together to get down the road. <laughs> How ignorant is that? I know I'm lying. I don't care. How ignorant is that? Here, right here's scripture to tell you, man. Matter of fact, if you want some more, Ecclesiastes 3 tells you that too. There's a time for everything and purpose under heaven. Amen? And so he says that, but then in verse 9, or chapter 9, verse 1, listen to this. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and what? Replenish the earth. Wait a minute, over here, it says they took off and in the Tower of Babel, they took off and they stopped. They just stopped. You see, their job was to, folks that are a lot smarter than me, and I studied this passage out, believe that they were sent just like Noah was told to do. He said, okay, boys, scatter abroad. But they're all of one language. Well, they're all talking. I said, well, I, I can't tell you how many men that I feel like probably, I'm not the one who calls them, God calls them, right? The Lord calls them in this ministry. Have, have said, Brother Cord, I, I don't know, I'm wrestling with a call. Okay. Talk, let's talk about it. Start talking about it. Some of them be older, some younger, all ages. I've worked with a whole bunch of them. They get about halfway through that thing, they'll be like, I, 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 I don't think I'm called. Or I like this one. I feel like I'm called into the, uh, uh, I'm called to preach, but I'm called to the you specifically. No, you're not. That's the first thing I say, boy, they get mad. No, you're not. Why? Why do you say that? I said, well, he don't call you director right off the bat. Hello? Hello? He, don't call, he calls men to preach. My first job, when I got called to preach, God called me and asked me if I could come do the music and I could preach every now and then, blah, blah, blah. And he said, by the way, you go teach such. I said, okay. He said, you got to sing your adults. Come on, man. I just surrendered. <laughs> well, I was studying. I mean, Saturday night I was studying. I had no after nothing. Because I didn't want to fail the folks who've been reading it the longest. <laughs> That'll make you study. I didn't say, well... Uh, brother, I've been thinking about it, and I feel like you, you're going to tell me what you feel like. Okay, tell me. You know I've only been doing it this long, right? That's what I'd look like. 
I've only been, hey, brother Jimmy, I know you've been doing this 30, 40 years. I just want to tell you what I think. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. When Joe Jimmy says something, you know what I said? Yes, sir. Amen? Yes, sir. Right? You call, you called to preach. Now, he may put you doing children's church, to which you pray, Lord, will you lower my calling and let me teach the senior adults? <laughs> That was a good one right there, amen. Because I tell you, God's going to bless you folks that deal with them little kids. Amen. Whew. Amen. Listen, but, but that, this is what they're doing in the text. You see, God had told them to replenish the earth. But they hold together and they say, wait a minute, you know, we got some good brick here. We got some good mortar. Man, why don't we? Most scholars believe that the tower was not just the tower, but that it began to be a walled city and they built off of that wall a tower off of it. They were planning a place to dwell in. That is what society will do when they do a couple of things. When they walk away from the mandate God gave them. Amen. 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 When they walk away from the mandate God gave them, and when they decide to do what the Bible says here, it's interesting. The Lord speaking to him, and Lord, behold, um, verse six, and the Lord said, "Behold, the people is, is one, and they have one language, and this they begin to do." In other words. It's just, you know, they could have built a tower to me. I didn't want it. I didn't ask for it. But they could have said, Lord, we're building you a tower. Which he could have said, hey, I don't want the tower. I want you to get spread out and go tell some people about me. Right? David tried that, right? They said, oh, Lord, I feel bad about building it. I want to build you something. He said, I didn't ask you to build it. You ain't going to get to it anyway. Just get the supplies together. Your boy will build it. Amen? You got you got to understand purpose and what you're here for. He says he says, listen, that's that begin to do, and nothing will restrain them from will be restrained from them. Why? Look what it says, which they have imagined to do, which they have imagined to do. Here's what's going on. They thought through, they processed, they thought about it, and they have really geared up for this moment to walk away from God. Now, church, you listen to me. Listen to me. You be careful to stick with the old ways. Amen. Now, I want you to make sure you hear what I said. I love old music. I love some new music. I love some, uh, I hate some old music. Amen? Amen. If it's all about Jesus, it's all right. Some music is for a concert. Ain't nothing wrong with a concert. I like going to them and getting down. But some music is for worship. Understand that and teach it and keep it that way. There's talking to you and there's preaching to you. There's Sunday school teaching and there's flat getting at you. And there's soul winning. Keep it that way. Keep the old paths where it is the good way. Amen? I've been doing this long enough to know I'm going to keep doing it this way. Amen? Why? Well, why not? You ain't not show me anything better. You'll hear people say, well, listen. Now, there's a... You, you don't have to change your message, but you need to refresh or change your method. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I thought about the method. I don't think there's a country song came out years ago, and I'm gonna sing just a smidgen of it. Dim light, stick smoke, and loud, loud music. Some of y'all can finish that for me. Don't do it. I don't think your church service has to have that. I don't care what your concert has. Amen? Amen? But your church service, your, your time to worship God. Hey, listen, if he wants to fill the room with smoke, Isaiah said he could do it. That's right. hey, amen. That'd be all right with me. But until he does it, I'd just back off with the lights and the smoke. Now, I know I just lost a bunch of churches they were going to let me preach at. <laughs> 
But I'm just telling you, there's a methodology to Christianity that's been around forever. Stand up, speak up, sit down and shut up. Amen. That's my job. But society left alone for less than 100 years will ruin, they'll absolutely ruin what God's plan was if they walk away or take their eyes off Jesus. Our Constitution and all those things in America has God all over. And they're slowly trying to erase it and get rid of it right now. Oh, but i got to tell you something. you got a few more years before you get rid of this old boy, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Amen? And I don't know, I may not get the voice to thank God, but to the ones that get it, I'm just going to keep shouting from the rooftop. Hey, I like what the old lady said. She came in this old dead church one time. She sat down on the pew, and the pastor, the reverend, took over the pulpit. And he began to preach, and he said, and Jesus is your hope. She said, oh, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. He just was shook up. He'd never heard that. He was like, man. So he, he looked at her. He looked around and deacons were like, we don't got our boy. We'll tell him. He jumped up there again. He said, Jesus, he, he's someone you could talk to as a friend. She praised the Lord. He's my friend. He's my friend. Amen. Boy, he's like, he motioned them two deacons. They come down there and said, here, and we ask that you just stay quiet, you know, during the song. If you have to do it again, we're going to have to take you out. Well, she was sitting on her hands. He started talking about the blood a little bit, you know, he kept it calm, you know, didn't get too serious. But man, every little detail he'd say, she could think of a hundred scriptures. Finally, she just said, well, glory! I can't wait to go. Amen! Boy, they grabbed her and picked her up by the elbows. She just started watching around. She's quiet for a minute, and then she said, hallelujah! Praise the Lord! They said, what are you yelling about now? He said, Jesus rode out in on one and I get carried out by two. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just stick with the stuff. Don't worry. Listen to me. Don't worry about what society is doing. As a matter of fact, here's my rule right now. If everybody is doing it, go the other way. Amen. Now you think I'm kidding, but you ask them, I'm not. Go the other direction. If everybody's saying, man, this is going to work, this is going to work, we grew our church exponentially. If they use that word, you might want to check it. But anyway, we grew our church and this happened, and this, that happened, and blah, blah, blah. Hey, just stop and breathe in. Breathe, just breathe. breathe. Because I'm telling you, I'm tell listen, I, you, I mean, they, I'm just telling you, look. When you start to preach God's Word, you start to stand flat-footed and live it in the, in the Word, and you start to grow, people are going to run for a little bit because mostly they're babies. Yep. They can't take hard preaching. They can't take true living. I'm telling you, I'm not going to have a wine Bible study. I'm not going to sip on wine while I say turn to the text and let's chat about something in Scripture. You've lost your mind, man. Yeah. Oh, oh. I don't have to take the Lord's Supper with a big old loaf. There wasn't no leaven in it. Amen. Some of y'all were tempted about it. Got that. Just share it later. <laughs> Society. I got to move on. Number two. I want you to flip to Psalm chapter two. I want, you I want to show you this imagining that people do. Psalm chapter two. <clears throat> Psalm chapter two is interesting. It gives us a picture of the system. Now, I want to tell you something. God is systematic. In other words, He has a system. problem is Isaiah 55 says we don't know it. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Isaiah 55, I'll give that to you real quick so, so you know what I'm talking about. But uh, some of you know that passage already. Let me get there. Pass it every time. Somebody flipped Isaiah 55. I changed Bibles in, in between this two. I had a bunch of stuff wrote down in this one. It's really helped me. Isaiah. Isaiah 55. And I want you to read this. I want you to read verse 8 and 9. Yeah, I know. 55. 8 and 9. That's something. You see, God has a system. We just don't always understand it. Why? Because if I could think like Him, well, I'd think I was God. 
But I don't get what he's doing. I don't understand everything he's doing. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Why? Because when you surrender it all, that's what you say you do. Trust Him. Trust Him. Now, ladies, I want to harp on that for a minute with you. Y'all are the warriors in the room. I'm just telling you. I didn't say warrior. I said warrior. I know you're the warriors already. But you got a tendency to worry about stuff y'all would be just handed over to them. And sometimes what you'll do is you'll say, well, nobody else going to worry about it. You're right. <laughs> now, i got to admit, there's some stuff I'm glad my wife worries about for me. Because I am a man. Amen. And listen to me. I'm just telling you. I ain't telling you to get on to you. We may be different. I can get on to men in just a minute. i got lots of ammo there. But you are going to have to let some things go that you cannot control. Now the reason I'm saying that, I'm just, yeah. here we go. The reason I'm saying that, I, I, listen, you say, why do you preach to a church like this about this stuff? Because I'd like to see the church like this stay like this and, and some. Amen? Amen? So I'm going to tell you, there's, there's some things that some women have decided they need to take control of in the church. Just like society. Amen? Amen. Oh yeah, it's quiet now. You know what you need to do? You need to look over there at the man and say, here's the one manly thing I'm going to do. Handle it, son. I'm going to go pray for y'all. Amen. 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 Hey, I'll tell you what. Hey, let me tell you, some of you men need to get off the look. I'm trying to play video games and get out and do some work. Get outside. Everybody's got to have a she shed or a man cave. And let me tell you what, man. Let the woman run the home. You go do something. I didn't have time when I was raising them kids. We had to work. Amen. They didn't know we was poor. We weren't. We was poor. Couldn't even get the other O and R out. Kidding. The Lord took care of it. But I'm telling you. Let, listen. You say, well, Brother Coy, it's my time. But can I ask you what Bible verse you memorized this week? How, how many of you know five Bible verses where you could lead somebody to the Lord? You could talk to them about Romans chapter 3, verse 26. Romans chapter 6, verse 26. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Romans, uh, 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 Romans 10. And, and several verses in there, 10 through 15, really. How, how many of you have learned some of those where you've got time to spare? Now that you've got time to spare, go share. Come on. Come on. I ain't lying to you. K King and I, our kids are grown and gone. I swear we ain't got no time. We're busy. Amen? There's a system. God has a system. Society will destroy the system. Let me show you. Romans, or, I mean, Psalm chapter 2. Listen to this. Why do the heathen rage and the people, there's that word again, imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves. It means to go, I ain't moving. And the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Can't you see that? As they left as they left from the east and, and they left Mos or Noah's side and the boys are leaving and they're taking their band of people with them. They've grown now. And he says, all right, go, go replenish. You've got to spread out. Your mom and me's going on, but you go. And, and he dies off and they all begin to travel together and they're supposed to get maybe this plane here and separate. But instead they go, you know, we've been thinking, why don't we break those cords that the Lord has on? Hey, listen to me. Some of you are thinking that right now. You're thinking, why? Man, I can't wait till I can get out from under the church. Out from under mom and daddy. Go ahead, old boy. Go ahead and do it your way. And he ran to me. You'll be coming back. Or you'll bust hell wide open. you got to 
a system too, don't you? I got it figured out, Brother Court. I got it. I'm going to go to welding school. They make you good money. I'm going to get me a new truck. And I'm going, that's it. Oh, you want to live with mom and dad with a new truck? Well, yeah. <laughs> you mean they got it figured out for you, right? <laughs> Old gal say ain't nothing going on but the rent. Amen? You don't have anything figured out. But I tell you, it's hard to get a young man to yield to God. I was one. Angry. Angry young man. I was angry. Man. I don't know why I was mad. I was raised by a good parent. I mean, I had good stuff. Right? I'm mad. I'm going to be mad. I'm going to do it. Elvis, my way. Thank you. And I remember when I finally sat down and said, okay, Lord, I got this trailer on these three acres of land. I got a wife and three daughters. I'm scared to death. I can't do it. Lord, I need you to, uh, I need you to take over. Matter of fact, Lord, I give you everything I got. I'll give you my talent. I'll give you whatever you think talent is, whatever that is. I'll give you everything. I surrender. It would be a little bit of time. God would call me into the ministry. And I went from working one job. I told everybody I was going to school. They're like, okay. I quit the job I was at. The trailer got rid of itself, amen. Amen. I think I sold it. I don't, I don't remember. It was rough. We moved into a trailer about as long as that pew. Three girls. They remember this. In this one bedroom, I can tell stuff now I'm older. I just don't. It don't matter anymore. And the girl, we all laugh at it now. But in one bedroom, we had all the drawers and 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 the Chester drawers and the and the dresser and all that in one room. Because they all wouldn't fit in one room. So in the other room, we had some beds. And then in another room, I think me and Kenya slept. That might have been the living room. I don't even know. And on Monday and Tuesday, I would head out. I'd, I'd serve at a church for a little while. Uh, I'd, I'd Sunday morning, Sunday night. Then I'd head out either Sunday night or Monday morning. And I'd go to college Monday and Tuesday all day until till about 8, 30, 9 o'clock at night. And I'd drive home. And uh, then I'd go to work two or three different jobs. Work on Saturday, whatever you do. Pick up anything you could. It wasn't long. We didn't stay there long. But I think we spent Christmas there, didn't we? Y'all have seen the presents we had piled. Then the church was so good to us. They, they got a bunch of stuff piled up, stuff everywhere. We didn't have enough room for it. It was a... Awkward looking Christmas picture. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Amen. And I'll tell you, God's been good from then. He's been good. Wasn't long. We were able to move into a little bit bigger place and spread out. Two years. I was licensed and ordained to my first church and we just kept on going. God's been really good. Really good. He had a plan system. If I went the way of the world, you know, I'd say, man, I can make some money. I can this, I can that. But can I tell you, once you know Jesus, and you try to create your own system, your Tower of Babel is going to come tumbling down. Amen. Right? It's going to come tumbling down. One writer said it like this. He said, we're not put here, or we're not here. Let me see if I can I wrote the quote down. I really wanted, wanted you to hear it. <clears throat> anyway, he says something like this. Peace and contentment are not exactly what we're here for in this world of no peace. And God confounded him because of this. Better, better uh, to be confused than a whole apostasy. Better for us to be confounded and spread out than for the whole of earth to commit apostasy. Amen. And that's exactly where we're headed today. Oh, let's get everybody in all the world uh, uh, thinking on the same page. 
Only problem is you can't do that because nobody thinks like Christians. Amen. If everybody in the world were thinking exactly the way any leadership in any country was thinking right now, would you be on board with them? This is where our Paul's really cool waiting for an answer. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Because they disregarded God in every aspect. You understand where I'm taking you? You see, there's society. There's a system. Then third, it becomes the individual. There's the sinner. Here, in, in Psalm chapter 2, I, I want to make sure the reason you see a system is you see the kings of the earth and all of them take counsel together to destroy uh, anyone who has anything to do with God. So now you see the sinner. Turn quickly to Psalm 62. Psalm 62. <clears throat> David's psalm, listen to what this says. Truly my soul waiteth upon God, for he cometh, uh, from him cometh my salvation. He alone, uh, uh, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long, listen to this, he's talking to his enemy now. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a bowing wall shall be, and as a tottering fence. That's interesting language, isn't it? What does it mean by that? You all ever seen a tottering fence? One barely, barely sitting up? You ever seen a bowing wall? I tell you what a bowing wall looks like. You know the trainer we lived in? <laughs> yeah. We had a tornado pass through. You know what the barometric pressure does when it comes through your place real close? It goes, <laughs> and the walls of my trailer went like this. <laughs> we come walking through the hallway like, there's something weird about this. <laughs> oh, wow. There's six inches difference between the bottom of that sheet rock and the bow in the middle. <laughs> it just sucked that stuff. I mean, it was crazy. It wasn't long to stay like that. That's what he's saying. But you see that word again. How long will you imagine mischief? How long do you think the world will imagine mischief against us before God takes care of them? Like an old fence that thinks it's holding its place. Or a wall that thinks it's going to stand against God. Not long. You know what you got to do? Just stand on his side. Amen. Just stick with him. You see, sinners think... Oh, I've got this. Lost people think, the world thinks, i got this. But they're like a bowling wall. They're like a tottering fist. They're not going to last long. All they do all day long is imagine what they can do to their enemy. Oh, I can get you this way. I can get you that way. And they're so lost in that concept. All the, all the people of God are doing all day long, should be doing is saying, Lord God, you're everything. Help. Come, come to us. Help us. Uh, uh, praise you, Lord. We praise your name. We're going to meet and, and sing songs to you. Amen. And keep on going. And he says, don't you worry. They're like a tottering fence. I'm going to knock them down real soon. And there's green pasture for you. You hear me, folks? Need some help tonight? Your enemy ain't long to hold you back. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Your enemy ain't long to hold you back. They're just like a fence that thinks it's something, but the wet ground aren't holding the posts, and they hadn't pulled the barbed wire tight. It ain't going to last long. It ain't going to last long. That bow and wall, it ain't going to stay up. Amen? It's not going to last long. That's to the center. You see, people are dying for, or to the uh, system to, in the center. Look at verse six, uh, Psalm 62. I want to read he says, he says uh, they only consult to cast in verse 4 down uh, from his uh, excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. You feel like that today when you listen to the news? My soul waiteth thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. 
Now something, boy, those sinners, they just keep on, keep on. They constantly, oh, yeah, yeah, everything's fine. And then, boy, they're hitting you with everything they can, right? Well, you see society. Society's made up of people, individual sinners, if you will, or lost folks. They've got a system. The system works directly against what God's doing. Again, if you see everybody going that way and saying it's great, even, listen to me, there was a time I may not said, but even in church work, you stop and you wait. Listen to me, even when Israel or Jacob thought he was going the right way and doing the right thing, he stepped aside for a night. Amen? Step aside for a night. Don't, don't just take it and run and decide that's the right thing to do. Step aside and make sure it's going right. Why? Well, go to Isaiah chapter 14. I need to hurry up. Y'all made me preach longer than I've preached in a while. Isaiah chapter 14. <clears throat> this is an incredible passage. I don't have time to read it all. But you need to understand what it's about. He's telling them about their bondage and how they're going to be set free. But listen to what it says. In verse 3 it says, And it shall come to pass in, that, in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from thy hard bondage wherein thou uh, wast made to serve. Uh, thou, th that, thou, that thou shalt take up thy, this proverb against the king of Babylon. Isn't that interesting? The king of Babylon. The place we're talking about Babel will be the kingdom of Babylon. And he says, you'll take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Here's, here's what they begin to say. And say, uh, verse 4, How hast thou oppressed, how has the oppression ceased? The golden city ceased. He's, they're kind of mocking him. So how has it stopped? The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. He said, nobody's helping you now, Satan. Nobody's helping you now. That's what he's saying. The whole of the earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. I'm telling you one day, Jerusalem. That's what he's talking about. And then he said, hey, one day, hey, he's going to take you down, son, and you ain't going to have nothing to say about it. And nobody's going to help you. Nobody. Listen to what he keeps saying. He says, yea, the, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, since thou art laid down, no feller has come up against us. Hell from beneath has moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee. Even all the chief ones of the earth, it hath raised up from the, their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? The pump is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spreadeth unto thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground uh, when did, which didst weaken the nations? This is where it gets interesting. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt the throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. You notice that language he used? Lucifer said, I'll ascend to heaven. What did those people at the Tower of Babel say? You see, everybody that will not bow a knee will eventually bow a knee. Amen. They want to try and build their tower right now. Because that's what their father, Satan, does. Amen? He's the one that first began to imagine. Do you know imagine or imagine, imagination? Uh, it's only used about 17 times in the Bible. It's not a bad word. Except it can be good or bad. The problem, 
when we use it in the Bible, when it's used, it's always used under a negative connotation. Always. Though it's not. It's a word that can be used the opposite way, but it's not. Because men left alone, well, let me show you. We talked about Noah. <clears throat> you know, God, uh, God come down to visit Noah one time, didn't he? The Bible says he came down to see him. And he says this in verse in chapter 6 of Genesis. I want to find the word. Oh, verse 5. He says, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. God said it. Left alone, folks. <clears throat> The sinner, the society, the system, even Satan declared what he did. We'll try to ascend to the heights of heaven on our own while tearing down everything God has done for us. But the saint, the saint you can find again if you flip back to Psalm 62. You see, I, I, I try to listen. I was listening to those prayer meetings. I was hearing you about folks hurting. I want you to listen to this psalm now without worrying about the imagination part. Listen to how David <laughs> says some things. Truly my soul waiteth upon God, for he for him, from him cometh. My salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. One negative thing here. Verse 4. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse and work, work, uh, inwardly. Say that. My soul wait thou only upon God. For my expectation is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is God. Truly in him at all times, ye people, pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us. Surely men of low degree are vanity and men of high degree are lie. But uh, to be laid in the balance, that are, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. What do people want? Power and control. He says, listen, uh, this psalm is so full of, of, uh, of, of David being uh, just praising God. There's an answer here in that. You see, he says, the people imagine a vain thing. But he says, I imagine something else. I, I see I see uh, that I want to trust in God. And, you know, sometimes you've got to say it. Everybody say, I trust in God. I trust in God. Let's, let's say this. Uh, from him cometh my salvation. From him cometh my salvation. He is my rock. He is my, rock. He is my salvation. He is my, salvation. He is my strength. He is my strength. I will not be greatly moved. I will not be greatly moved. <laughs> Amen. My soul waiteth upon God. He's my expectation. He's my rock. He's my salvation. He's my glory. He's my refuge. I tell you, when you say stuff like that, you ain't got time to go. Amen. <laughs> now listen to me. I'm not. I'm not trying to make light of any problem in here. I'm just telling you, though, the answer for the saints is not to keep imagining in your head and running over things you can't fix. On, the yeah. answer is found in a song that was written about 15, 20 years ago when a guy penned it for us and helped us. I can only imagine 
what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what all I will do when I can forever love and praise you. I can only imagine surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. Yeah. We can only imagine. But we can and it doesn't have to be in a negative sense. It can be in a positive way. It means to think on, to let it consume you. The enemy is consumed every day with trying to destroy an enemy that it cannot see and doesn't know its thoughts and can't even understand or obtain how high he is. And if we don't watch it, we'll get consumed with our enemies being consumed with our God. Instead of focusing on him. I had a shirt one time for years. I wouldn't wear anything that had scripture and all that stuff on it. I felt I just felt like it might be a little weird. But I saw one one day and it got me. It had a big old eyeball on it. it. Had a cross in the middle of it. And it said, cross eyed for Jesus. <laughs> I thought, that's all right. <laughs> Amen. I wore that thing out, cross-eyed, cross-eyed, cross-eyed. One vision. I'll leave you with this. People that get saved need to learn this. I learned it, in, I learned it but I didn't understand it and get it all together until college when they were teaching us about holiness and things like that. And he said, people, you worship uh, uh, vertically, right? You're not singing to men. When you applaud for a group, you're applauding. Well, God, thank you for bringing that. And thank you for that. They're, they've got some kind of musical ability, and man, praise God for it, right? Uh, preachers jokingly call it when you stand out there and you say good message to me. I thank you for that, and I appreciate it. But it's the glorification of the worm. Amen. I'm just a worm yep. delivering a message. Thank you for saying that, and I understand. To God be the glory. Yeah. Amen? Amen. But but uh, we worship vertically, but we witness horizontally. We, we to each other. We gotta talk to each other. But your life is the same way. If you read the book of Judges, it ends the same way it starts. There was no king in Israel, and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Well, that's where you find yourself sometimes when you don't read your Bible enough. When you you know you have Jesus, but you tend to just flop around. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't, you, you commit the same sin over and over and you're trying to fix it. And you, but what happens is you serve in the Lord. You go along and you do a James chapter 1. Oh, you've looked and instead of looking, you look upon and you lust. The Bible says when lust has conceived to bring forth sin and sin with his friends bring forth death. And then he says, do not err my beloved. Verse 17. And so you sin, you fall into sin, and you don't repent. And God sends you into judgment or exile or slavery for the judgment. You cry out, God sends a judge. In the book of Judges, he would send a judge. Old Samson comes along and frees you. You repent, you get things right, and you at 12 o'clock again. And all of a sudden, here comes your temptation or your trial that you made a temptation, right? You sin, fall right back into judgment, and they just ran a cycle constantly. Instead of getting things right. You remember when you beat some of that? If you don't mind sharing, how many of you remember when you finally figured out you needed to tithe? You quit Amen. arguing about it? Yep. Amen? Yep. You know, I'm a Christian. I'm going to starve, flat to death. Trust and obey. I'm going to starve, trust and obey. I'm going to get it. Oh. Bob says, don't give it mad. Yeah, but I need to give it one first time, man. Get over it. Amen? <laughs> How many of you figured that? You figured out, you know, how many of you were, you, you fought constantly until you figured out, man, Christ loved the church like I'm supposed to love her. And I know he loves me. Remember that? Amen. Quit fussing and fighting all the time. Amen? Yeah. 
And so you figure those things out and your life becomes this. It becomes one direction. He says this. It's the same way in preaching. Hey, get up there and preach the word and make a beeline for the cross. Amen? Amen. Make a beeline for the cross. Amen. Listen to me. Your life has meaning and purpose. And it's directional. While other people are floundering around and looking for stuff. I'm not talking about looking for a job. or looking. For, I'm talking about their life is, um, they may be wealthy and have the same job, but their life is bouncing. They don't have any direction. They, it's in cars. Then it's in fishing. Then it's in sailing. Then it's in yacht club. Then it's in snowmobiles. Then it's the four-wheelers again. And they got all this stuff and they don't, they don't have nothing though. Meanwhile, you got an old boy just tootling along. He's got one old truck he's had for 80 years. And he's a kid. What, what keeps him happy in that truck with no air conditioning? Trust and obey. He had fallen for the system. Because his peace is in God. Man cries peace, peace when there is no peace. Not on this earth. Jesus said the only way you'll have world peace is when I come back. The only way you'll have tranquil peace is ever now and then. The only way you'll have inward peace is when you receive me as your Savior. Amen. John 14. Folks, get a hold of your inward man. Slow down. Make sure that Holy Spirit's there. And then you begin to focus on that. Don't fall for building a Tower of Babel here. Amen? You don't need your name on anything here. Amen? You need your name on some up there. Amen? And I tell you, if you'll write your name on the hearts of some people, they won't forget it. Amen. They won't forget it. A young man that got saved at work, I texted him early this morning. Paul, praying for you. I love your family. I hope you do well. He said, man, I sure appreciate you. Thank you. I'm praying for your family too. Said, ah, amen. I mean, for God. I got somebody else on my side. Amen. 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 Let's stand to your feet. Would you come play the piano? Just whatever the Lord lays on your heart. We don't have to sing. You just play it. Maybe you're here tonight. I know I've can I tell you, I'm so sorry I've kept you exceedingly long both services. I've got to tell you, I don't preach everywhere, somewhere like this all the time. Where I can see you trying to suck up the Word. And it, it urges me on. The next time I'll only preach 22 minutes. <laughs> I love you in the Lord tonight. I sure appreciate your pastor for allowing me to come. I thank my Lord and Savior. If this were my last message, I'd be okay. I'll be okay. I want to trust you. I feel such an urgency in my life now. Some of you are sitting out there and you don't know me. 